Hello everyone and welcome to Releasing the Unreleased, the series where I talk about games that never saw the light of day. I always feel like unreleased games are such an enigma. What happened behind the scenes to lead to this? What would the game have been like? What would change about this franchise's canon if it did come out? Today's game is quite the enigma. Is it a hoax? Is it real? You decide. Today we are talking about Sonic Edusoft. Sonic Edusoft was going to be an educational Sonic game being developed by Teartex around 1991 for the Sega Master System. Just like games like Sega Sonic Bros, there is a playable ROM that you can download to check the game out for yourself. Unlike Sega Sonic Bros, however, this game is in a less finished state with several gameplay mechanics being completely broken or non-functional. First, there are 15 main levels of the game which all consist of the same basic formula. Each level is a race against a certain badnik to get to the end of the level. What type of badnik you race is dependent on the difficulty the player is playing on, the easiest being a motobug and the hardest being a rabbit. To move Sonic forward through the stages, you must solve certain word problems, math problems, and letter matching puzzles. The faster you solve the problems, the faster you move towards the end of the stage to beat the badnik. This is one of the first instances of this game still being broken. In some of the puzzles where you must match the letters, sometimes the game doesn't give you any matching letters. Also, sometimes giving the right answer will come up as wrong, causing the player to guess what the game is deeming the right answer in that moment. Alongside the main game, there are also three playable mini-games as well. These were a departure from the educational aspect of the game and were more so just fun little games for children that were simple enough to comprehend for stupid stinky little pants shitters. Why do I always gotta make it mean? I love kids. The first minigame is called Balloon. This sees Sonic rolling along a halfpipe trying to pop a balloon as it passes by. In its current state, this game is also broken since the balloon will literally pop whenever it feels like it, whether you hit it or not. The second minigame is called Trampoline. This game is simple enough, keep Sonic bouncing on the trampoline for as long as you can without him falling. A never-ending Sonic Arkanoid. The last minigame is just known as the Green Hill minigame. This game sees Sonic running towards the right at a consistent pace. You are then tasked to jump over debris and pop balloons in order to get to the end as quick as possible with the highest score. All in all, this game seemed to be what you'd expect when it comes to educational games based off of popular video game franchises. So in a world where Mario's preschool days and Donkey Kong Jr. math exists, why was Sonic Edusoft given the shaft? Did it even exist at all? Ooh. Before we get into why the game was cancelled, I want to start out with a quick little history lesson of how this game was even found out about in the first place. This game received no coverage at all. No magazines talked about it, no showcases at any shows, barely any location tests, nothing. With so little coverage, how was this even found out about in the first place? In 2006, an anonymous user created a Wikipedia page for Sonic Edusoft describing the game. Very quickly, the page was deleted and deemed a hoax in the Sonic community. Later, in 2007, the topic was brought up on the forums of SMS Power, questioning the existence of Sonic Edusoft based on the deleted Wikipedia article. After some deliberation, the message board deemed Sonic Edusoft an elaborate hoax. Then, like the phoenix rising from the ashes of Sonic fanfiction, Sonic OCs, and other cringe Sonic fans are known for, we were graced by a user simply known as The Programmer. On March 15th, 2007, at 6.55 a.m., the community was shaken. Hello folks, this is no hoax, but it is not a very interesting title. Basically, it was an experiment from 1991 aimed at a much younger audience than even the Genesis Sonic fan back then, hence why it was put onto the Master System. It was really aimed at 5-year-old kids, hence why the gameplay is so simplistic. When pressed on more information, he gave the most information about this game that we've ever gotten. The post is really long, so instead of boring you with the whole thing, I'll just give you the highlights. Yes, I can provide a few more details, but I don't want to go into too much detail due to a conflict of interest. I do want to see this title recorded amongst the history of Sonic though, so sooner or later I will tell all. Yes, I have a ROM. No, I don't think I have the source code. I can take some more screenshots at some point. In fact, if I can find them, I know I have a number of screenshots already... somewhere. The game was developed at Tiertex, 
When I started there, Sonic was all the rage. As I recall it, it had been released earlier the same year. I'm not sure where the concept of it came from. It was either one of two people, but Sega knew of the existence of the title, there was no doubt about that. They were interested in the title, but I can't be sure what their motives were. It may have been related to the Pico machine that came out. The title is likely to have been the third title using Sonic to have been in development, not the second as people have claimed. Why do I say this? I do not know this for certain, but it is very likely that Sega were working on Sonic 2 almost as soon as finishing the first, given the property they had on their hands. Development of this title would have started after that. It is possibly also very interesting that this was the first Sonic title developed outside of the Sonic team and Japan. That speaks volumes about the relationship between Sega and US Gold and US Gold in Tier Tex, which was very strong. The minigames were single button press affairs, really designed for kids. In fact, the game was focus tested at a primary school in Dinsbury, Manchester. It was quite well received, but then again, if I was 5 years old, I'd probably enjoy playing with Sonic more than anything else. I say it is of no interest, but of course, it does have its place in the history of Sonic. It is an unofficial or unlicensed game? It's hard to say. It's not a fan game, definitely, but it was officially allowed to be developed, just not approved for publishing. The usage of Sonic was never licensed, not that it may have needed to be if Sega published it. As far as being a licensed Master System game goes, if it wasn't approved, it was never a licensed ROM. You could say it was the first unofficially unlicensed game. In the future, I will likely put up a webpage about this title, giving the full story, but presently I cannot do it for reasons I cannot explain. Yes, I swear I cut a significant chunk of this post out, it was that long. People were still skeptical about the validity of the programmer's post, questioning why, even 15 years after the game's initial development, why this conflict of interest caused him to become more secretive. It seems that people took this as a whole crock of bull and he was not believed still. Let me know in the comments if you believe him or not. Regardless of that, it was brought to Sonic Retro's attention in 2008 and through discussions on the board, they were able to find the working ROM, which, as I said before, you can play right now. Just a warning though, apparently it doesn't like a lot of emulators. I've seen that Fusion likes to play it sometimes, but even then I saw people having trouble. Of course, Sonic Edusoft probably wouldn't have had a huge impact on Sonic Cannon were it to have come out, but there is one aspect of this game that I've noticed that I really haven't seen discussed anywhere else. It seems that Sonic Edusoft's structure is very similar to that of an educational Sonic game that did come out on the PC, Sonic Schoolhouse. Sonic Schoolhouse is a first-person educational puzzle game that came out in 1996 exclusively for PC. This game would see you being guided by Sonic to complete word challenges, answer questions, and answer math problems which would award you with keys, Sonic tokens, and bus tokens. Much like how Sonic Edusoft had the educational levels and then fun little mini-games outside of the educational stuff, this game had much of the same. You could use your Sonic tokens to go into the backyard of the schoolhouse and play a matching game or collect all of the rings while avoiding Robotnik. Using the bus tokens let you go on a field trip where Sonic drives like he's on the fucking Autobahn. Then you get to watch a short educational video about certain animals. Riveting. Where's my Steam re-release of this game, Sega? The fans are clamoring for it, and by the fans, I mean only me. That concludes today's episode of Releasing the Unreleased. What did you guys think of Sonic Edge Soft? Put your thoughts in the comments below and let's discuss. I love reading your guys' comments, and if I heart your comment, that means I read it. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday in order to catch our live streams. Also, tune in on Friday for a review of Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Let's give a special shout out to our channel members, Andrew Retro Games and FBarrow5, for being the most well esteemed guests of them all. If you want to get a special shout out in every video, make sure you click the join button to become a channel member, and you'll be able to see these videos as soon as I'm done with them, as opposed to the regularly scheduled times. We also have our merch store in the description below where we got some nifty shirts, mugs, and stickers in order to power up your gameplay experiences. Still having trouble with the Master King Coco trial? I beat it drinking from one of our mugs. Checkmate. With that, I bid you, our well-esteemed guests, adieu.